as Greg watches his wife, Jillian, laughing intimately with another man at her high school reunion, his world shatters. The woman he vowed to love forever is entwined with someone else, her carefree joy no longer meant for him. Standing in the dim club, he feels his life unravel, loyalty and trust slipping away like sand through his fingers. Before we dive into the story, comment below where in the world you're watching from today. If this is your first time discovering the channel or you haven't subscribed yet, please support us by clicking the subscribe button. It truly means a lot to us. Thank you so much. Gregory Henderson considered himself a simple man, shaped by a life of diligence, loyalty, and unwavering values instilled by his parents. His father's rough hands and weary eyes had always taught him the price of an honest day's work, while his mother's soft yet determined spirit had imparted lessons of love, resilience, and the strength it took to build a family from scratch. These were the qualities that defined Greg, and they were the foundation upon which he had built his life, his relationships, and, he believed, his marriage. He met Jillian on a humid summer evening at a barbecue hosted by a mutual friend. She was a flash of vibrant energy, her laughter loud and unrestrained, a stark contrast to the subdued murmurs of the guests around them. Greg noticed her almost immediately, her presence pulled him in like a magnet. She was recovering from a recent breakup, a detail shared by their mutual friend with an obligatory shake of the head. But Jillian didn't seem burdened by heartbreak, she radiated a kind of carefree charm that was hard to ignore. Their connection developed naturally, as friendships do, yet with an undercurrent of something deeper. Greg, steady and committed, found himself captivated by her unpredictable spirit. Jillian, in turn, seemed drawn to his calm confidence and the way he made her feel grounded amidst the chaos of her own life. Love, it seemed, was inevitable. Over time, they became inseparable, weathering the ups and downs growing together and sealing their bond in marriage. For Greg, it was a promise as unbreakable as the sunrise each morning. But life has a cruel way of blurring clarity, like the sudden crack of thunder on a clear day. Recently, he had felt a shift in Jillian's attention. She seemed preoccupied, distant, her laughter carrying an edge he hadn't noticed before. Conversations that once brought them closer now felt hollow, echoes of words falling into an empty chasm. Their wedding anniversary was approaching, a day Greg usually anticipated with warmth and joy. But this year, as the day crept closer, a dull apprehension began to creep in. Jillian seemed fixated on her upcoming high school reunion, her attention split between endless messages from old friends and frantic shopping trips for the perfect outfit. Greg tried to dismiss the unease gnawing at his thoughts, attributing it to the typical ups and downs of a long relationship. But when Jillian stood before him that evening, holding two pairs of heels and asking, should I wear black or beige tonight? He felt a subtle pang of something sharper than usual. Black suits you, he replied, his voice soft but his gaze searching. She flashed a quick smile before disappearing back into the bedroom, the moment as fleeting as it was disconcerting. The evening unfolded like a scene in a play, rehearsed and polished, yet leaving him feeling like an audience member in his own life. At the reunion, they mingled and exchanged pleasantries, yet Greg couldn't shake the feeling that he was merely an accessory, a placeholder in her world. She drifted from one friend to another, each conversation pulling her further away from him. Eventually, Jillian disappeared with Lena, her old high school friend, into a whirl of laughter and nostalgia that left Greg standing alone, an outsider amidst the flickering memories of her past. As the night wore on, Greg's restlessness grew into something darker, a suspicion he couldn't explain. He left the reunion early, slipping out under the guise of fresh air but fueled by a need to confirm the whispers in his mind. Following a hunch he didn't want to believe, he drove to a familiar club on the edge of town, a place Jillian and her friends had often mentioned. And there, under the dim, pulsing lights, he saw her Jillian, laughing with her head tilted back, her hands intertwined with those of another man. The sight stilled his breath, the world fading into silence as he watched the way she leaned into Troy, her high school sweetheart, the way their bodies moved in sync, as if they'd never been apart. The ground beneath him seemed to fracture, everything he had built, everything he believed in, shattering in a heartbeat. In that moment, the man who had built his life on loyalty, on honor and commitment, felt the weight of betrayal settle like lead in his chest. The world around Greg seemed to blur as he watched Jillian, her face illuminated by flashing lights, her smile carefree and full of a joy he hadn't seen in years. And it wasn't with him, it was with Troy, her first love. There was something strikingly intimate about the way she leaned into Troy, a casual ease Greg couldn't recall ever sharing with her, even in their best days. It felt surreal, like he was witnessing a scene from someone else's life, someone else's heartbreak. But the cold, undeniable reality was that this was his life, 
his marriage unraveling right in front of him. He didn't remember walking toward them, but suddenly he was there, standing only a few feet away. Jillian saw him first, her eyes widening with shock. Then something else he couldn't quite decipher was it guilt, or was it simply annoyance at being interrupted? Troy didn't seem phased at all. Instead, a slow smirk played at the corners of his mouth, and he took a possessive step closer to Jillian, as if asserting his place in her life, challenging Greg to stop him. Greg, Jillian started, her voice strained, but he cut her off, holding up a hand. Don't, he said quietly, his voice steadier than he felt. I don't want excuses or lies. Just tell me why. He looked between the two of them, his gaze finally settling on Jillian. After everything we built, why throw it away like this? Jillian's expression shifted, and she glanced at Troy before meeting Greg's gaze, her eyes hardening. Because I'm tired, Greg, she replied, her tone edged with bitterness. I'm tired of pretending, of living in a life that doesn't feel real anymore. I gave us everything I had, but I, I needed more. I needed to feel alive again. Her words struck like a blade twisting in his chest, each one slicing through the fragile remnants of trust he'd tried so hard to hold on to. He opened his mouth to speak, but Troy cut in, his voice dripping with condescension. Face it, Greg, Troy sneered Jillian and I belong together. We always have, you were just convenient. He glanced at Jillian, placing an arm around her shoulders. She deserves to be with someone who really understands her, someone who doesn't just sit behind a desk all day, too exhausted to pay her any real attention. Greg clenched his fists, his jaw tightening as a wave of anger surged within him. For a moment he felt like he might lose control, that he might strike the smug expression off Troy's face. But then he looked at Jillian the woman he had once promised to cherish, to love unconditionally, in sickness and in health. And he realized that if he stooped to Troy's level, he would lose not only his dignity, but also a piece of himself. So this is what you want? He asked Jillian, his voice barely above a whisper. After everything we've been through, all the promises we made, this is what you've decided. Jillian's expression didn't waver. Yes, Greg, this is what I want. Troy was my first love, and we promised each other that if he ever came back, we'd try again. I didn't plan on this, but when he showed up, she trailed off, her eyes shining with something that looked like regret, but it was too faint, too late. He took a shaky breath, swallowing down the hurt that threatened to consume him. I see, he murmured, his voice barely holding together. And then, with a cold finality, he added, it's Gregory, not Greg. You don't get to use that name anymore. Turning away from the two of them, he walked out of the club, leaving behind the murmurs and pitying stares of the crowd. The night air hit him like a wave, sharp and bitter, but somehow it brought a clarity he hadn't felt in a long time. Each step he took felt heavier, as if the weight of the betrayal was pressing down on him, anchoring him to a new reality he hadn't chosen but could no longer escape. Driving home, his mind raced with memories, each one a reminder of the life he thought he'd built with Jillian. The laughter they'd shared, the quiet mornings, the plans for the future, all of it felt distant now, like echoes of a story that had never really belonged to him. By the time he pulled into the driveway, he knew he couldn't let himself drown in sorrow. He couldn't give Jillian the satisfaction of seeing him broken. Inside the house, he locked the door, the sound resonating through the empty rooms. It was a final act, a symbolic closure on a chapter he hadn't expected to end this way. His hands trembled as he grabbed a box from the garage, mechanically packing Jillian's belongings, each item a piece of her he no longer wanted in his life. He moved with a precision that surprised him, methodically clearing out traces of her presence. Her clothes, her perfume bottles, even the photo frames, all of it went into the box, the process feeling like an exorcism of everything she'd represented. Once the box was filled, he pushed it to the corner of the room, feeling a grim satisfaction at the sight of it sitting there, detached from his life, like her memory. As he finished, he noticed their wedding album on the bookshelf, its cover worn from years of handling. He pulled it out, flipping through the pages, each photo a reminder of promises once made and now broken. His gaze settled on a particular picture of Jillian, her smile wide, her eyes filled with a joy he'd once thought was meant for him. But now, looking at it, all he saw was a stranger. With a sigh, he closed the album and placed it back on the shelf, a monument to a life that no longer held any meaning. He sank onto the couch, exhausted, letting the silence of the house wrap around him. It was a heavy, almost suffocating silence. Yet there was something freeing about it too, a sense of finality, 
a break from the lies he hadn't even known he was living under. In the days that followed, Greg went through the motions, transforming his life piece by piece. He canceled joint accounts, removed Jillian from his bank information, and reached out to a lawyer, setting the wheels in motion for a divorce. Each action felt like shedding a layer of his old life, a step closer to reclaiming the identity he'd lost in the shadows of their marriage. Friends reached out, some with condolences, others with surprise. But when Mark and Lena friends who had been close to both him and Jillian tried to apologize, he realized they had known about the affair all along. Their betrayal stung almost as deeply as Jillian's, a reminder of how much he had misjudged the people around him. You knew, he said, his voice hollow as he confronted them. You watched it happen and said nothing. Mark looked away, guilt flashing across his face, while Lena tried to explain, her words tumbling out in a frantic attempt to justify their silence. But Greg couldn't hear it. He was done with excuses, done with people who valued convenience over loyalty. As he walked away from them, he felt a strange sense of peace, a resolution that solidified within him. He was alone now, stripped of the people he'd once trusted, but he felt stronger, more resilient. This was his life, his chance to rebuild from the ruins, and he wouldn't let anyone take that from him again. And with each step, he felt the ache of betrayal dulling, replaced by a steely resolve. This was just the beginning of his journey, a journey away from the life he thought he knew, into a future where he'd be the only one defining his worth. The days that followed felt surreal, as if Greg was moving through a dense fog. Each morning he woke up to an empty side of the bed, an unmistakable void that served as a bitter reminder of Jillian's betrayal. Yet, as time wore on, he felt something unexpected brewing inside him a fierce determination to take control, to reassert himself in a life that had felt hijacked. Returning to work provided a temporary distraction, the monotony of numbers and contracts dulling the ache he carried. He poured himself into his job, spending long hours at the office, far beyond the usual, losing himself in projects that once felt mundane. His colleagues noticed the change, and his receptionist, Colleen, quietly checked in on him, offering coffee and words of encouragement. But Greg wasn't ready to talk, to share the details of the storm inside him. Instead, he wore a mask, one that hid the festering anger and the grief that refused to leave. One evening, he found himself seated across from his lawyer, a meticulous man named Robert Kane. They discussed the practicalities of the divorce, a cold business-like conversation that stung with every word. Robert reviewed Greg's prenuptial agreement, his tone calm yet precise, detailing how Jillian's demands for a substantial portion of his assets would likely be denied. Greg, given the prenup and your financial setup, Jillian doesn't have much ground to stand on, Robert assured him, flipping through documents with a practiced ease. She may try, but the agreement protects you. Financially, you're secure. Greg nodded, a part of him feeling a grim satisfaction. He had once thought the prenup was unnecessary, a formality his parents had insisted upon, something he'd only agreed to for their peace of mind. Now, it felt like a lifeline, a final safeguard against Jillian's betrayal. Still, the legal proceedings loomed ahead, a maze of paperwork, court appearances, and settlements that would officially close the chapter he was desperately trying to leave behind. The process was grueling, each new form and email from Jillian's lawyer feeling like a tug back into the life he was trying to escape. And yet, he soldiered on, each step a testament to his resolve, each piece of paperwork another thread cut in the tangled web of their marriage. One night, Greg sat alone in his living room a single glass of scotch in hand, the dim light casting shadows across the room. Memories crept in, unbidden and relentless scenes from a life he had thought would be his forever. He remembered the promises, the laughter, the moments that now felt tainted, like someone else's dreams. The anger that had simmered beneath the surface for weeks began to bubble over, and before he knew it, he had flung the glass across the room, watching as it shattered against the wall, scattering shards in all directions. He stood there, chest heaving, staring at the mess he'd made, feeling a twisted sense of release. The destruction, small as it was, felt symbolic, like he was breaking apart the illusions he'd held onto for so long. In a fit of frustration, he swept his arm across the table, sending books, picture frames, and trinkets clattering to the floor, the sound echoing in the emptiness around him. It was in the middle of this chaos that his phone buzzed. He glanced at the screen to see a message from James, a close friend who had heard about the divorce through mutual friends. James had always been a source of wisdom, someone Greg could rely on for honest advice, and he had called, sensing that Greg might need someone to talk to. Greg hesitated, 
then answered, his voice gruff. Hey, James. There was a pause on the other end, a weight to the silence that felt strangely comforting. I heard, Greg. I just wanted to check in. For the first time in weeks, Greg felt the tightness in his chest loosen. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I don't even know where to start, he admitted, his voice thick with exhaustion. Then don't start at the beginning, James replied gently. Just start with where you are. Greg closed his eyes, letting the words sink in. He talked, slowly at first, the words stumbling out like pieces of shattered glass, sharp and painful. He told James about the night he had found Jillian with Troy, about the coldness in her voice, the look in her eyes that had told him everything he needed to know. He spoke of the loneliness that had settled into his bones, the betrayal that had left him feeling hollow. James listened, offering quiet words of support, reminding Greg that he wasn't alone, that he still had people who cared about him, people who believed in him. It was a balm, a lifeline he hadn't realized he needed. By the time the call ended, Greg felt a sliver of peace, a sense that maybe, just maybe he could survive this. The days bled into weeks, each one a small step toward reclaiming himself. He began to rediscover old hobbies, taking up woodworking in his garage, the rhythmic movements grounding him, offering a focus outside of his thoughts. He poured his frustration, his anger, into the wood, shaping pieces that were solid, unyielding everything he wanted to become. With each project, he felt himself growing stronger, more resilient, his sense of purpose slowly returning. One afternoon, Colleen stopped by his office, a knowing smile on her face. She handed him a flyer for an art exhibit, an event hosted by her niece, Rebecca. You should come, she said warmly. It'll do you good to get out and meet new people. Greg raised an eyebrow but accepted the flyer, appreciating the subtle encouragement. He hadn't gone out socially since the divorce proceedings began, hadn't felt the desire to engage with the world outside his tightly controlled existence. But something in Colleen's smile, the gentle nudge she offered, made him consider it. That Saturday, he found himself at the art exhibit, surrounded by vibrant colors and conversations, the hum of life swirling around him in a way that felt both foreign and invigorating. He wandered through the gallery, pausing in front of a painting that caught his eye a piece filled with intense, swirling colors, a chaotic blend that somehow exuded a sense of peace. It resonated with him, reflecting the chaos within him, yet offering a glimpse of calm beyond the turmoil. You like it? A voice asked beside him. He turned to see a woman with kind eyes and an easy smile, her gaze warm and inviting. I painted that one, she added, a hint of pride in her voice. I can tell, he replied, surprised by the ease in his voice. It's honest, feels like it's been through something, and still found a way to hold together. She smiled, her eyes glinting with understanding. Sounds like you're seeing a bit of yourself in it. He nodded, feeling a connection he hadn't expected. They talked for hours that evening, sharing stories, laughter, and moments of quiet understanding. Her name was Rebecca, and there was a depth to her, a resilience that felt familiar yet refreshing. But the first time since Jillian's betrayal, Greg felt a flicker of hope, a possibility that maybe life could offer something beyond the pain he'd been holding on to. As the evening came to a close, Rebecca offered him a card, an invitation to an upcoming event she was hosting. I'd love to see you there, she said, her voice soft, her gaze lingering just a moment longer than necessary. Greg took the card, feeling a warmth he hadn't felt in a long time. As he walked away, he glanced back at the painting one last time, the swirling colors now holding a new meaning. It was a reminder that even in chaos, beauty could emerge, that even in betrayal, there was a path forward. And for the first time in weeks, he felt like he was finally taking his first steps into a new chapter, a chapter he would write on his own terms. Greg felt an unmistakable shift in the days that followed his meeting with Rebecca. It was as if her kindness, her understanding had given him permission to let go, to start moving forward in ways he hadn't been able to imagine before. The sense of betrayal that had once hung over him like a storm cloud began to dissipate, making way for a quiet but resolute determination. This wasn't about forgetting Jillian or the pain she had caused, it was about reclaiming his life, piece by piece, from the ashes she had left behind. His interactions with Rebecca became a small yet significant part of his routine. They texted occasionally sharing brief updates about their days, fragments of their lives. Her messages were a breath of fresh air, filled with warmth and a humor that cut through the shadows lingering around him. Rebecca had a way of making him see things differently, her perspective grounded yet vibrant, and Greg found himself opening up in ways he hadn't expected. 
One evening, after a long day at the office, Greg received a text from Rebecca, come by the gallery if you're free. I think I've painted something you'll want to see. Intrigued, he made his way to the gallery, the familiar blend of curiosity and anticipation growing in him as he entered the space. Rebecca greeted him with a smile, her expression a mix of excitement and something softer, something he couldn't quite place. She led him to the far corner of the gallery, where a new painting hung the landscape this time, dark yet laced with streaks of brilliant color. The image was haunting yet hopeful, a depiction of a storm breaking over a vast, wild ocean, with a single ray of sunlight piercing through the clouds. It's called Resilience, she explained quietly, her gaze steady as she watched his reaction. It's about finding strength in the middle of chaos, about realizing that sometimes, the things that try to break us can become the very things that help us rebuild. Greg stared at the painting, his throat tightening. He felt as though she had reached into his soul, capturing a part of him he hadn't even understood himself. In that moment, standing there with her, he realized just how much he wanted to move forward, to let go of the bitterness that had once defined his days. He turned to her, his voice soft. Thank you, Rebecca. You have no idea what this means to me. Her smile was gentle, understanding. You don't have to thank me, Greg. Sometimes we all need a reminder of who we really are. The next few months passed in a whirlwind of growth and healing. Greg spent less time dwelling on the past, immersing himself in his work and in the small moments of joy he found each day. He and Rebecca continued to see each other, their relationship growing slowly but meaningfully, each encounter bringing a warmth that felt like a balm to his wounded heart. Yet, as life began to fall back into place, a new challenge emerged, the finalization of his divorce. The paperwork was nearly complete, and he was just one signature away from closing the chapter on his marriage to Jillian. But with that closure came a new battle. Jillian's lawyer had requested a meeting, a final negotiation that felt like an insult after everything she had put him through. The day of the meeting arrived, and as Greg entered the conference room, he found himself face to face with Jillian for the first time since the night at the club. She looked different worn, somehow, as if the fire that once fueled her spirit had dimmed. She barely met his gaze, her expression a mixture of discomfort and something that almost resembled regret. Her lawyer started with the formalities, but soon Jillian interrupted, her voice trembling slightly. Greg, I know this might not mean much to you, but I'm sorry. I didn't think things would end this way. I, I was just trying to find myself. Greg regarded her quietly, taking in the remorse in her tone. Part of him wanted to feel anger, to hurl back every ounce of hurt she had inflicted on him. But as he looked at her, he felt only a distant, almost detached empathy. She was no longer the woman who had broken his heart. She was simply another person, flawed and lost, struggling to make sense of her choices. You found yourself, he replied evenly, but in the process you lost us. And now, there's no going back. His voice held no bitterness, just a calm acceptance of the reality they now faced. He took a deep breath signed the final document, and stood to leave. Goodbye, Jillian. I hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. As he walked out of the room, a weight lifted from his shoulders, a release that felt like freedom. The chapter was closed, and for the first time in months, he felt truly at peace. That evening, he met Rebecca at a small, intimate restaurant she had suggested. She noticed the change in him instantly, her eyes warm with understanding. How are you feeling? She asked, reaching across the table to squeeze his hand. He smiled, a genuine, unguarded smile. Free, he replied, the word carrying a weight he hadn't realized he'd been holding. I finally feel free. They spent the evening laughing, sharing stories, the conversation flowing effortlessly. There was something easy about being with Rebecca, something that didn't require explanations or justifications. She understood him, not as a man who had been hurt, but as someone who was finding his way back to himself. Over time, the relationship deepened, each shared moment building a foundation rooted in honesty and mutual respect. With Rebecca, there were no illusions, no expectations to be anyone other than who they truly were. And in that simplicity, Greg found a happiness he hadn't believed he would feel again. Months passed, and Greg continued to rebuild his life, each day a step further from the shadow of his past. He reconnected with old friends, pursued new passions, and even began to take on more challenging projects at work. He was thriving, a man transformed, unafraid of the scars that had once haunted him. One evening, as he and Rebecca strolled through a quiet park, watching the sunset over the city, he turned to her, his heart swelling with gratitude. You know, I never thought I'd feel this way again, he confessed. You've shown me 
that there's life beyond the pain that I can rebuild even when I thought everything was lost. Rebecca smiled, her eyes bright with warmth. That's because you chose to move forward, Greg. You're stronger than you know, and your journey is just beginning. As they walked hand in hand, Greg felt a sense of purpose settling within him. He knew that his past would always be a part of him, but it no longer defined him. He was ready to build a future, one founded on the strength he had discovered within himself and the love he had found in Rebecca. And as they watched the last rays of the sun disappear beyond the horizon, Greg felt a quiet assurance that this was only the beginning of something beautiful, something real. His journey had been marked by pain, by betrayal, but it had led him here, to a life rich with meaning, where every step forward was a testament to his resilience, his courage, and his capacity to love again. The months that followed were some of the most fulfilling Greg had experienced in years. Each day, he felt himself growing stronger, more secure in the life he was building. The bitterness and regret that had once clung to him like shadows slowly faded, replaced by a quiet joy and a newfound sense of purpose. He had not only survived the storm Jillian had left in her wake, he had transformed through it, becoming someone he was proud to be. His relationship with Rebecca blossomed in ways that felt both unexpected and deeply natural. They shared a connection that went beyond words, a bond formed not out of necessity or habit, but from a place of mutual understanding. With her, Greg didn't feel the need to put on a facade or hide his scars. She saw them, acknowledged them, and accepted him all the same. In her presence, he found a freedom he hadn't known he craved. One evening, as they sat on his balcony overlooking the city, Rebecca spoke about an idea that had been forming in her mind. She looked at him, her gaze thoughtful. You know, you have this talent for connecting with people, for seeing through situations and understanding what's really going on. Have you ever thought about mentoring or speaking? Maybe something that could help others who are going through tough times. Greg was taken aback, surprised by her suggestion. I don't know, he replied, running a hand through his hair. I've never thought of myself that way. I'm just a guy who made it through some rough patches. Rebecca smiled, undeterred. Exactly. And there are a lot of people who could benefit from hearing how you did it, how you turned things around. You've been through betrayal, heartbreak, and you came out stronger. People need to hear that it's possible. Her words stayed with him, lingering in the back of his mind in the days that followed. He couldn't shake the idea that maybe, just maybe, there was a purpose to everything he'd gone through a way to turn his pain into something meaningful. A week later, he decided to test the waters. He reached out to a local community center, offering to lead a small workshop on resilience and rebuilding after loss. The coordinator was enthusiastic, immediately setting a date and assuring him there would be people interested. Greg was both nervous and excited, unsure of what to expect but eager to see if he could make a difference. The evening of the workshop arrived, and Greg stood at the front of the room, looking out at a group of faces filled with the same uncertainty and pain he had once felt. He began with his story, recounting the events of his divorce with honesty, acknowledging the hurt, the anger, and the path he had taken to rebuild. As he spoke, he noticed the way people leaned in, their eyes reflecting a glimmer of hope, a sense of understanding. For the first time, he realized that his story wasn't just his own, it was a bridge, a connection to others who had walked similar paths. After the workshop, several people approached him, sharing their own experiences, their struggles, and thanking him for his honesty. One woman, her eyes filled with tears, told him, you don't know how much I needed to hear this. It's been so hard and I didn't think I could get through it. But hearing you, it makes me feel like maybe I can. Greg left the center that evening with a new sense of purpose, a quiet determination to continue sharing his story, to use the pain he had once resented as a source of strength for others. He began holding regular workshops, each one filled with people seeking solace, understanding, and a reminder that healing was possible. The more he shared, the more he healed himself, each conversation reaffirming his belief that life, despite its trials, held endless possibilities for renewal. As his reputation grew, Greg found himself invited to speak at larger events, his story resonating with audiences far beyond what he had ever imagined. His work became a passion, a calling that filled his days with purpose and his heart with gratitude. And through it all, Rebecca stood by his side, her unwavering support a constant reminder of the love he had been so fortunate to find. One afternoon, as they walked through a park hand in hand, Greg paused, turning to face her, his expression serious. Rebecca, he began, his voice soft, I never expected to find someone like you. You've shown me what it means to be truly seen, to be loved in a way I didn't think was possible. You've given me a reason to believe in myself again. 
She smiled, reaching up to touch his face. Greg, you've done all of this on your own. I just helped you see what was already there. They stood in comfortable silence for a moment, the weight of his words hanging in the air, until Greg took a deep breath. Rebecca, will you marry me? Her eyes widened in surprise, a smile breaking across her face as she threw her arms around him. Yes, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. Yes, I'll marry you. Their wedding was a small, intimate affair, held in the backyard of their home, surrounded by close friends and family. The vows they exchanged were simple heartfelt, a testament to the journey they had shared and the future they were building together. As they stood hand in hand, promising a lifetime of love, loyalty, and resilience, Greg felt a profound sense of peace, a certainty that he had found his true home in her. In the years that followed, Greg and Rebecca built a life filled with laughter, love, and purpose. They started a family welcoming two children who brought a new kind of joy and meaning to their lives. Greg continued his work, speaking to audiences across the country, his message one of hope, resilience, and the power of reclaiming one's life. Every now and then, memories of Jillian would surface, a faint echo of the past. But they no longer held the weight they once had. They were simply reminders of a journey that had led him to where he was meant to be. Greg had forgiven her, not for her sake, but for his own, understanding that holding on to bitterness would only keep him tethered to a life he had outgrown. One evening, as he sat on the porch with Rebecca, watching their children play in the yard, he reflected on the path he had taken, the twists and turns that had brought him to this moment. He knew that life would always hold challenges, that there would be moments of pain, of uncertainty. But he also knew that he had the strength to face whatever came, that he was capable of rebuilding, of rising from the ashes stronger than before. With Rebecca by his side, he felt ready to face the future, no matter what it held. He had found his peace, his purpose, and most importantly, his capacity to love and be loved without reservation. And as he looked out at the life he had built, he felt a deep, unwavering gratitude for the journey that had led him here, a journey marked by pain, but defined by resilience, courage, and an unbreakable will to rise. Greg's life had taken on a rhythm of happiness and contentment that, at one time, he hadn't believed was possible. He had everything he needed, a loving wife, two beautiful children, and a purpose that filled his days with meaning. Each morning, he awoke with gratitude, each night he went to bed with peace. But as life has a way of doing, one final reminder from his past came unexpectedly, threatening to unsettle the balance he had so carefully rebuilt. It happened on a brisk autumn afternoon. Greg was at a bookstore, signing copies of his new book, Rising from the Ashes, a memoir and guide on resilience that had gained a surprising following. As he finished chatting with a young man who had shared his own struggles, he caught a glimpse of someone standing at the back of the line, waiting quietly, almost hesitant. It was Jillian. Uh, seeing her again after all these years, Greg felt an unexpected calm wash over him. Gone was the resentment, the pain, the anger. All that remained was a quiet acceptance of the role she had played in his journey. She looked different, older, and perhaps a little more weary than he remembered, as if life had taken its toll on her in ways she hadn't anticipated. When it was her turn, she approached the table slowly, her gaze lowered. She clutched a copy of his book, her fingers fidgeting with the edges of the cover. Hello, Greg, she began, her voice soft, tentative. I wasn't sure if I should come, but I needed to see you. Greg met her gaze, nodding with a calm smile. Jillian, it's been a long time. She managed a weak smile, her expression a mixture of sadness and something resembling remorse. I read your book, she said, glancing down at it. I didn't expect it to hit me the way it did. It made me realize just how much I hurt you. I wanted to say I'm sorry. I don't expect forgiveness, but I need you to know that I regret what happened. For a moment, silence hung between them, heavy yet peaceful. Greg took a deep breath, looking at her with a compassion he hadn't thought he'd ever feel. Thank you, Jillian. It took me a long time, but I've come to terms with it. You are a part of my journey, and I'm grateful for everything I learned because of it. In a strange way, I have you to thank for where I am now. She looked surprised, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. You don't hate me, she whispered, as if the thought had haunted her. Greg shook his head. No, I think I did at one point but holding on to that hate only kept me stuck. Letting go, that's what allowed me to move forward, to heal, to find happiness again. She looked down, nodding slowly. I envy you, Greg. You found a way to rise, to build something beautiful. I tried, but it's harder than I thought. I thought I was searching for freedom back then, but I think I was just running for myself.
Greg listened quietly, sensing the weight of her words. He knew that pain, that feeling of being lost, but he also knew that she had to find her own way through it. There was no shortcut, no easy path to healing, just a steady, sometimes painful process of self-discovery. As they stood there, another thought struck him, something he felt compelled to share. Jillian, I found peace not because I found someone else or because I wrote a book. I found it because I chose to face my own flaws, my own pain. It's never too late to do that. She nodded, absorbing his words with a somber expression. Thank you, Greg. Maybe someday I'll find what you found. With a final nod, she turned to leave, clutching his book to her chest as if it were a lifeline. Greg watched her go, feeling a sense of closure that resonated deeply within him. The chapter was finally, truly closed. And for the first time, he felt that his past, with all its painful twists and turns, had given him something invaluable wisdom, strength, and the capacity to forgive. That evening, he returned home to Rebecca and their children, feeling lighter than he had in years. He shared the encounter with Rebecca, who listened with her usual understanding and grace, her hand resting gently on his. Are you okay? She asked, her eyes searching his. Greg nodded, a soft smile playing on his lips. I am. For the first time, I feel like I'm really free of the past. Meeting her today, it was like closing a book when left open for too long. I finally feel complete. Rebecca squeezed his hand. You deserve this peace, Greg. You've earned it. They spent the rest of the evening with their children, playing games, reading stories, and filling the house with laughter. It was in these moments that Greg felt his truest self, not the man shaped by past betrayals, but a husband, a father, and a man who had built a life filled with love purpose, and connection. Later that night, after tucking their children into bed, Greg and Rebecca sat together in the quiet of their living room. Greg leaned back, exhaling a sigh of relief that seemed to rise from the very core of his being. You know, he said softly, if someone had told me years ago that I'd be here, in this moment I wouldn't have believed them. I thought my life was over back then, but now I realize it was only the beginning. Rebecca leaned her head against his shoulder, smiling. Sometimes, the hardest moments lead us to the greatest joys. It's like a fire that refines us, makes us stronger, truer to ourselves. He wrapped his arm around her, feeling the warmth of her presence, the steadiness of her love. You're right, and I wouldn't change any of it. It's all part of what brought me here, to you, to this life. They sat in silence, the comfort of their shared understanding filling the room. In Rebecca's presence, Greg felt whole, a man who had faced his past, learned from it, and grown stronger. He knew there would always be challenges ahead, that life would continue to test him in ways he couldn't foresee. But he was no longer afraid of what might come, no longer haunted by the shadows of his past. In the quiet stillness of that moment, Greg realized that he had truly come full circle. The pain, the heartbreak, the betrayal it had all shaped him, but it no longer defined him. He was free, at peace, and ready to embrace the future with open arms. As he held Rebecca close, he felt a deep, unwavering gratitude for the journey that had brought him here to this life filled with love, resilience, and purpose. He knew now that life was not about the things that happened to him, but about the choices he made in response. And he had chosen to rise, to rebuild, and to love again. In that moment, with his past finally laid to rest, Greg felt a quiet yet powerful truth settle within him, he was home. With the past behind him and the present filled with purpose, Greg found himself stepping into a new role he hadn't anticipated. His book, Rising from the Ashes, was more successful than he'd ever imagined, resonating with people across the country. Invitations to speak at events continued to pour in, and each new opportunity brought him into contact with people whose lives had been touched by his story. The more he shared, the more he felt that his journey had a larger purpose, not only as a story of survival, but as a testament to the power of resilience and the possibility of new beginnings. But as fulfilling as this work was, Greg always returned home grounded in the life he had built with Rebecca. She was his anchor, his constant, and he often marveled at how naturally she complemented every aspect of who he was. Her support was unwavering, and together, they were raising their two children in a home filled with love, honesty, and encouragement. They had created a space where their children could feel safe, understood, and deeply valued. One evening, Greg sat on the floor of their living room, a stack of old family photos spread out before him. Their daughter, Emma, who was eight, sat beside him, her eyes bright with curiosity. Daddy, she asked, holding up a photo of him from years before, who's that with you? Greg looked at the picture, a memory from a time he'd nearly forgotten. It was a photo of him in his 20s, taken before he'd met Rebecca, 
back when life had been a mix of dreams and uncertainty. Next to him stood an old friend, someone he had lost touch with in the years since. Seeing it now, he was struck by how much had changed. That was me a long time ago, he replied with a smile, brushing his daughter's hair back as he spoke, before I knew what life would really bring. Emma's eyes widened. You look so different. You look younger, she giggled, covering her mouth with her hand. Were you happy then? Greg paused, considering her question. I thought I was, he answered carefully, but I was still figuring things out. Sometimes we think we're happy, but we don't realize there's something better waiting for us. It's like a story you don't know how it ends until you've read all the chapters. Emma nodded thoughtfully, her expression serious. But now you're happy, right, Daddy? Greg smiled, his heart swelling as he looked into her innocent, questioning eyes. I am, Emma. I'm happier than I ever imagined I could be. And a big part of that is because of you and your mom. Rebecca, who had been listening from across the room, approached them, her smile soft and full of love. She knelt down beside Greg, resting her hand on his shoulder. You've come so far, Greg, she said quietly, her voice filled with pride. And the best part is we get to share this life together. As their children played around them, Greg took a deep breath, a sense of gratitude washing over him. His life was full in a way he hadn't known was possible. Each day felt like a gift, each moment a reminder of the strength he had found within himself and the love he had been blessed to discover anew. But even as life settled into a comfortable rhythm, Greg remained committed to his work and the message he had shared in Rising from the Ashes. He and Rebecca began discussing ways they could expand their reach, perhaps by starting a foundation dedicated to helping individuals rebuild their lives after hardship and loss. It would be a place where people could find resources, support, and guidance a safe haven for those seeking a fresh start. Months later, they launched the Resilience Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to offering counseling, financial assistance, and educational workshops. It was a venture born from their shared passion, and Greg poured himself into it with a dedication that felt deeply fulfilling. Rebecca, who had a background in counseling, led workshops, providing support, and helping others reclaim their sense of self-worth. As the foundation grew, Greg's work took him to new places, meeting people from all walks of life. One evening, after giving a talk at a local center, an elderly woman approached him, her eyes misty with emotion. Thank you, Greg, she said, her voice thick with gratitude. Your story reminds me that we're never too old to start again. I lost my husband years ago, and I thought my life was over. But hearing you tonight, it made me feel like there's still hope, still more to come. Her words touched him deeply, reaffirming his belief that each person's journey held a purpose, even in the face of pain. He shook her hand, feeling a connection that transcended age and experience, a shared understanding that life's trials could transform into unexpected blessings. Back home, he shared the experience with Rebecca, who listened with her usual empathy and grace. She held his hand, her touch warm and reassuring. You're changing lives, Greg, she said softly. You're giving people a reason to believe in themselves again. That's a legacy most people can only dream of. Years passed and Greg and Rebecca's family grew, along with the reach of their foundation. Their children watched as their parents dedicated their lives to helping others, learning firsthand the values of compassion, resilience, and self-worth. Their home became a place of inspiration, a living example of how life's greatest hardships could give rise to a legacy of love and purpose. One summer afternoon, as they celebrated the foundation's fifth anniversary, Greg stood on a stage in front of a crowd, Rebecca by his side. They had planned the event to honor the countless stories of transformation that had emerged from the foundation's work. People from all walks of life, each with their own stories of loss and recovery, gathered to celebrate a shared journey of resilience. As he looked out over the crowd, Greg felt a wave of gratitude wash over him, his heart full as he spoke. When I look back on my life, I see moments of joy, of love, of pain and loss. But through it all, I learned something powerful. We are stronger than we realize, and there is always hope, even in the darkest times. This foundation is not just a resource, it's a testament to the resilience within each of us. He glanced at Rebecca, his voice softening as he continued. I could never have imagined this life, never dreamed that the pain of my past would lead to something so beautiful. And for that, I am endlessly grateful to my wife, my family, and to each of you for being a part of this journey. The crowd erupted in applause and Greg felt Rebecca's hand slip into his, grounding him in the moment. He knew that his life, though marked by hardship, was richer for it. And as he looked at the faces of those who had come to hear his story, he understood that his journey had come full circle. In the years to come, 
Greg and Rebecca's foundation would continue to grow, helping thousands find strength in the face of adversity, offering hope where once there had been despair. Their family thrived, rooted in the love and resilience that had brought them together, a legacy that would endure long after they were gone. Greg's story was no longer just his own, it was a beacon for others, a reminder that no matter how broken we may feel, we can always rise, always rebuild, and always find love anew. And as he stood there, hand in hand with the woman who had taught him to love again, he knew that he had finally found what he had been searching for all along, a life filled with purpose, a heart filled with peace, and a legacy that would endure forever. As the years passed, the work that Greg and Rebecca had poured into the Resilience Foundation continued to ripple outward, touching lives they could never have imagined. Their foundation had grown into a network of support centers across the country, each dedicated to helping people navigate through some of life's most difficult chapters. For Greg, the journey of sharing his story and seeing others rise from their own ashes felt like a gift of purpose he had discovered through the very pain that once threatened to undo him. At home, he and Rebecca watched their children grow, their lives enriched by the values of resilience, empathy, and determination that Greg and Rebecca had worked so hard to embody. Emma and her younger brother, Liam, took part in their parents' work, helping out at events, volunteering at the foundation centers, and learning the profound impact of kindness. Their family wasn't just bonded by love, but by a shared mission to spread hope and courage. One fall afternoon, Greg found himself revisiting a favorite spot in his hometown an old bench beneath a sprawling oak tree in the local park. It was the same bench where he'd once sat during the darkest days of his life, contemplating a future that had felt irreparably broken. Now, as he sat there, watching the leaves drift down like confetti, he reflected on how far he had come. The man he was now felt so distant from the person he'd been, and yet he could still trace the thread of growth back to that time of loss, understanding now that each challenge had shaped him into someone he was proud to be. A soft voice interrupted his thoughts. Dad. Greg turned to see Emma approaching, her face alight with curiosity. She was now 17, poised and compassionate, with a depth of understanding well beyond her years. Hey, sweetheart, he said, smiling as he patted the spot beside him. She sat down, studying him for a moment before speaking. You know, I've heard so many people talk about your story at the foundation, at school, even in the community. But I don't think you've ever told me the whole thing, how it really felt, what you went through. Greg paused, surprised by her question, but touched by her curiosity. He hadn't told her the full story, always assuming she understood the broad strokes. But now, looking at her, he realized that his journey might hold more meaning for her than he'd understood. This was his chance to pass on the lessons he'd spent a lifetime learning. He took a deep breath, thinking back to those days, allowing himself to be vulnerable for her sake. Emma, when I lost everything I thought I knew my marriage, my trust, my sense of self, I was angry and hurt. I felt like my whole world was gone, like everything I'd worked so hard for had been taken from me. I thought I'd never recover. She listened intently, her eyes wide, her expression reflecting both concern and admiration. But over time, he continued, his voice steady, I realized that sometimes, life strips things away to make room for something better. If I hadn't gone through that pain, I wouldn't have met your mom, I wouldn't have built this life or found the purpose that drives me every day. That's why I share my story. I want others to know that no matter how hopeless things feel, they can find a way forward. Emma nodded, her expression thoughtful. I think that's amazing, Dad. And I guess I never really understood how much you went through to get here. It makes me proud to know that you didn't give up, that you turned something so painful into something so beautiful. Greg smiled, a warmth filling him that only his children's words could bring. I'm glad you understand that, Emma, and I hope you know that whatever challenges you face, you'll have the strength to overcome them too. You're already stronger than you realize. They sat in companionable silence for a while, watching the leaves fall, the world around them peaceful and bright in the autumn sun. In that moment, Greg felt as if he was exactly where he was meant to be, his life woven together with meaning and purpose, his legacy alive in his children. A few days later, Greg received an invitation to speak at an international conference on resilience. It was an honor, and though he was hesitant to leave home for such a big commitment, Rebecca encouraged him, reminding him of the impact his words had on others. She reassured him that their family would be waiting when he returned, that they would always be his anchor. The conference was held in a grand hall, filled with hundreds of people from all corners of the world, each one searching for inspiration, for guidance, or perhaps for a way to move forward from their own past hurts. 
As Greg took the stage, he felt a familiar sense of purpose settle over him, a calm confidence that his story was meant to reach these people, that they too could find hope and healing. He spoke with a raw honesty, sharing not only his pain but also the lessons he had learned, the strength he had gained, and the life he had rebuilt. When he finished, the audience erupted into applause, their faces reflecting gratitude, respect, and even a newfound hope. For Greg, it was a humbling experience, one that reminded him why he had started this journey in the first place. As he left the stage, a young man approached him, his eyes filled with tears. Thank you, he said, his voice thick with emotion. I lost my wife last year, and I didn't think I'd ever feel whole again. But hearing your story, it makes me feel like there's a future waiting for me, like I can rebuild. Greg placed a reassuring hand on the man's shoulder, offering him a small but sincere smile. There is a future for you. It won't be easy, but with time you'll find strength you didn't know you had. And someday you'll look back and see that this was the beginning of something meaningful. The man nodded, a glimmer of hope shining in his eyes. And in that moment Greg understood that his legacy wasn't just about the foundation, or the book, or even the family he had built. It was about every life he touched, every heart he helped to heal, and every soul that found courage through his journey. When he returned home, Greg was greeted by Rebecca and their children, their laughter filling the air as they ran to him with open arms. As he embraced them, he felt a deep, unshakable joy, a sense of fulfillment that went beyond words. In the years that followed, Greg continued his work with Rebecca by his side, their lives intertwined in love and purpose. Together, they created a legacy that would endure long after they were gone, a legacy of resilience, compassion, and the belief that no matter how dark life may seem, there is always a path forward. And as he looked back on his journey, Greg knew that he had found something truly timeless, a life filled with love, a purpose that reached beyond himself, and a legacy that would live on in the hearts of those he had touched. As Greg entered what many called the autumn of his life, he found a peaceful rhythm. Days were filled with purpose, but without urgency, the pace gentler yet filled with meaning. Together with Rebecca, he continued to guide the Resilience Foundation, though now he spent more time mentoring others who would eventually take over. He and Rebecca cherished their time with family, especially now that their children, Emma and Liam, were blossoming into young adults, each pursuing passions inspired by the values their parents had instilled in them. One chilly November afternoon, as Greg sat with Rebecca on their porch, sipping coffee and watching the leaves fall, he reflected on how much their lives had changed. The journey from despair to purpose, from heartbreak to enduring love, felt like a circle that had finally closed, its every twist and turn carrying a purpose he could now see clearly. He looked over at Rebecca, whose eyes still sparkled with the same warmth and wisdom that had drawn him to her all those years ago. You know, he said, reaching for her hand, I think we've built something truly beautiful together. Rebecca smiled, squeezing his hand. We have, Greg, and we've done it by facing each challenge with resilience. I think that's the legacy we're passing on. Their quiet moment was interrupted by Emma's voice as she stepped onto the porch, her cheeks flushed from the cold. Mom, Dad, I have something to tell you. Greg and Rebecca shared a look, both sensing that their daughter had something important on her mind. What's on your mind, sweetheart? Greg asked, patting the seat beside him. Emma hesitated, then smiled. I wanted to let you both know, I've decided to join the foundation after I graduate. I've been thinking about it a lot and I feel like it's the right place for me. I want to continue what you started and help others find their strength, just like you both have. A wave of emotion washed over Greg. He hadn't expected Emma to choose this path, but hearing her decision filled him with pride and gratitude. He had always hoped that his journey would inspire others, but he hadn't imagined that his own children might choose to carry on his work. Emma, he said, his voice thick with emotion, you have no idea how much that means to us. Seeing you want to make a difference, it's more than I could have ever hoped for. Rebecca hugged Emma, her own face alight with pride. You're going to be incredible, Emma. You have so much compassion and strength. The Foundation will be lucky to have you. The decision seemed to draw their family even closer, as if the work Greg and Rebecca had poured their lives into was truly becoming a family legacy. Liam, though still young, had already shown an interest in psychology, and he often talked about using it to help people find healing and purpose. Watching his children embrace these values filled Greg with a satisfaction that went beyond words. As the seasons turned, the foundation celebrated its 10th anniversary. 
The event was held at a grand venue with guests from across the country gathered to honor the work that had impacted so many lives. The air was filled with warmth and gratitude, and as Greg and Rebecca took the stage to speak, he felt the weight of the journey that had brought them to this moment. Today, we celebrate not just the foundation, but the resilience of every person who has walked through its doors, Greg began, his voice steady and clear. When I first started this journey, I never imagined that it would grow into something so much larger than myself. The pain that once defined me became a stepping stone, leading to a life of purpose and love. Rebecca took his hand, her smile bright and proud, and we couldn't have done this alone. This foundation is the result of every story shared, every person who chose to rise despite the odds. Each of you has contributed to this legacy, and for that, we are deeply grateful. The room erupted in applause, and as they stepped off the stage, Greg was approached by countless people, former participants, current staff, and supporters, each one expressing their gratitude for the impact he and Rebecca had made in their lives. He listened to their stories, each one a reminder that the pain he'd endured had not been in vain. His life, once fractured, had woven itself into something far greater, a mosaic of hope for so many. As the evening wound down, Greg took a quiet moment to himself, stepping outside to gaze at the stars. The night was calm, and he felt a profound peace settle over him, as if every chapter of his life had found its place, creating a narrative that was complete. Rebecca joined him, slipping her arm around his. Penny for your thoughts. He chuckled softly, looking down at her. Just thinking about how far we've come, how this all started with pain and somehow became something so beautiful. Rebecca smiled, leaning her head on his shoulder. I think that's what life is about. Turning pain into purpose, finding love where we least expect it, and building something that lasts. And we did that, Greg, we truly did. In the following years, Greg transitioned into a full-time mentor, guiding the next generation of leaders within the foundation. Emma and Liam both joined the team, each bringing their own strengths and perspectives, and the foundation flourished under their leadership. Greg watched with pride as his children took on the roles he and Rebecca had once held, carrying forward the vision that had once been a lifeline for him. On a quiet evening shortly after his 70th birthday, Greg sat with Rebecca in their garden, watching their grandchildren play in the distance. The years had softened him, his once dark hair now silver, his face marked by lines etched through decades of laughter, tears, and resilience. But his spirit remained as strong as ever, anchored by the life he had built and the love that had guided him through each chapter. Rebecca reached for his hand, her gaze warm and tender. Do you ever think about the beginning? About how different things were? He nodded, his eyes thoughtful. I do, and I'm grateful for every moment, even the hardest ones. They all led me here, to this life with you, to this family. I wouldn't change a thing. They sat in silence, a comfortable stillness settling around them, a shared understanding that words couldn't capture. They had built something timeless, a legacy that would endure beyond them, rooted in the love and resilience that had guided them through each step of their journey. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow over the garden, Greg felt an overwhelming sense of fulfillment. He had lived a life defined by growth, by love, and by a purpose that transcended his own story. His legacy was not just in the foundation or the countless lives he had touched, but in the love he had found and nurtured, in the family who would carry his memory forward. In the quiet of that evening, Greg understood that his journey had indeed come full circle. He had found his purpose, built a life filled with meaning, and left a legacy that would continue to inspire long after he was gone. And as he held Rebecca's hand, watching their grandchildren chase fireflies under the fading light, he felt the profound truth of a life well lived, that even in the darkest moments, there is always a way to rise, to find hope, and to leave a legacy of love that would endure through time.